Hi, I'm Bibbs, the founder and CEO of the Lotus Forums. Um, I'm here at Hethel today at Lotus Cars. I may have been to have a look at a new car, the Amira, which um, you've got to enjoy, to be fair. I'm speechless at the moment. I'd love to tell you more, but the 6th of July is when we'll all get to see that. Uh, I'm here with Lotus Managing Director Matt Windle, who's very, very busy at the moment, but has given us some time to answer some questions, um, some of our questions and questions from our members on TLF. So, without further ado, Matt Windle, Managing Director of Lotus Cars. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your background in the automotive industry, including your time at Lotus? Yeah. Uh, hi. Nice to be here. Nice to be on the, on the forum. Yeah, my background is I was actually an apprentice. So I'm an apprentice coach builder. So I worked for a company called Dormobile that used yep. to make hamlets, as you'll know, from Kent. Um, and then from there, I went into uh, technical drawing in the drawing office, computer aided design engineering. And then I basically worked at most levels now through to I was the exec director of engineering before my promotion in January. And um, why Lotus? Why did you come here initially in 98 and what drew you back in 2017? Well, there's a bit of a story about how I stayed here. So um, in 98, I was actually working out in Holland. I was at Nedcar and uh, you could only stay there for six months tax free. And so I needed to do something else. And I was thinking about going to Sweden, but then somebody got a phone call and Lotus at that time were working on the new release or the, the second Monaco, the second release. It was, there was so much work here, it was unbelievable. So I came to Lotus. Um, pretty quickly, I met somebody who worked in HR, Sarah, who's now been my wife for 21 years. So that's the reason I stayed. Happy anniversary. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I instantly fell in love with Lotus. I think the spirit of this place, the people, the, the variety of work as well is really good. And it, I, I think Lotus gets under your skin, it stays with you forever. And in your opinion, from both times you've been there, what is it that Lotus do the very best? And what areas at the moment are you improving? So what did Lotus do the best? I mean, I think the products really, I think we understand uh, the lineage of the history and what we want the products to be, which is world-class leading dynamics, the aerodynamics and things like that. Um, but it's the people that make this business. So it's, it's not just the people that work at Lotus, it's the fans, the customers, the dealers. It's just such a great, environment to work in. That's what they do best. I think the areas we need to um, improve are we need to make the cars more desirable to a wider range to increase the volume. Um, there's no secret that my task I've been given is to make Lotus profitable. Um, but the good news is that Lotus invests those profits in products. So we have a plan of sports cars that are going to follow after a mirror as well. We are going into other markets. We've announced that other segment, so the lifestyle cars will come along pretty soon afterwards. Um, but that's because we need to increase the volume, we need to increase the profitability. But we've confirmed that we're building sports cars in Hethel and we will keep that DNA that's in those cars. You've been managing director now for a while. What's your proudest moment or is that still to come? Uh, I think probably the proudest moment is the, will be the launch of a mirror that we're going to see on the 6th of July. I think we're, we're really we're going through a cultural change. Um, you know, we are one team. We we want to we want to put the staff first. Um, COVID tested that last year, but we we looked after the staff. We paid them fully. We've protected them. We've brought in flexible working. Um, so I think my proudest thing really is just seeing the team come together in the team spirit. Product wise, Avaya's out there. It's fantastic. We'll get that into production this year, and then Amira's coming afterwards, which. I've been involved in that programme the whole way through. So it started while I was in engineering and now it's working through. So I've, I've lived with that car for the whole time. So it's great. I've seen a lot of changes over the last year at Hethel. You've invested a significant sum in the infrastructure here. Is that now complete or have you still got more to accommodate these higher manufacturing volumes, which are hoping to be around the corner? So for Amira, we can do um, the investment we've done in the plant is, is enough for what we need to do there. We've got capacity now of uh, just under 5,000 on a single shift. So obviously, if we need more, we can, we can go double shift straight away. Um, but the, the changes we brought in around an automated paint shop, auto, semi-automated production line, not only will that give us the throughput of cars that we need, but it really increases the quality, the, the perceived quality, the actual quality. Um, and you'll see uh, a very good quality product coming out of this factory for the future. Who knows? We, we own quite a lot of land here. It's, it's behind you. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but beyond the track, we own a lot of land here. And that's a nice position to be in because we have the land if we want to develop on. Yeah. 
With cars nowadays becoming bigger, heavier and more complex for global homologation, how does that fit in with Lotus DNA? Yeah, cars are getting heavier and um, a mirror will be um, heavier than a lease. It's always going to be. But we, we always strive for making the cars as light as we can. They'll always be the lightest in their class. So that, that is ingrained into us as DNA for how we design the cars. Um, the thing is, it's about the overall performance as well. So you will see with that car that we have taken Avora Dynamics and we've improved them. So, and, and like for like, weight-wise, it's actually, if you take out the additions, it's a lighter car than the Avora as well. If Colin Chapman was still with us today and he was your boss, how would you be justifying your current plans to him? I think um, he's an innovator. He always was an innovator. Um, he, he will see that what, what we've managed to do through our, our, our plans and our Vision 80 is that we're actually going to put Lotus at the forefront in, in some areas as well. Um, some of our established competitors, you're not going to beat them by doing the same thing as them. So when we were looking at the the uh, business plan, we were thinking, right, what can we do different? Uh, EVs is where it's going to go, ultimately, and we want to be ahead of the game in that. But it wasn't just that. We also wanted, and this is the big thing we went through with our shareholders, is for them to invest in our own platforms. So for Lotus to have their own platforms that we can get the cars that we want dynamically and performance-wise, but we can also sell that on for Lotus Engineering, is a very great place for us to be. As Managing Director, what's your typical day? And also, what do you enjoy in your free time? Uh, so, my days are varied. Um, it's been busy this week. Uh, I had a week off last week, actually, and I've got to say, the team were brilliant. You know, there was a, a distinct lack of emails. Um, interestingly, this weekend, uh, the, uh, the, the email system's going down for the whole weekend, so that's great. <laughs> There's no, no work this weekend, because we're, we're doing a migration of 365. But generally, I do a 12-hour day, um, always, you know, I do some in the mornings I generally do at home and then come into work. It depends, it, it, it's a varied workload, um, but I love it. You know, it's, work's not hard if it's enjoyable, is it? And, mm. and I absolutely love it. Away from home, um, I spend a lot of time with my family. That's, that, that's what I do. Trying to force myself to read a bit more. So I'm, I've now got to a chapter at night and I'm trying to progress that as well. Um, but yeah, I enjoy keeping fit, so running, cycling, and I love being by the beach. Um, I have a day skipper license, so really? I sail. Um, but I'm a bit of a fair weather sailor. If it's not 30 <laughs> degrees, I'm not interested. So I don't, I don't go out of Ipswich Harbour. I'd like to be in the Ionian or somewhere like that. And with the fitness, I understand you open up the track to members of staff and other local yeah. people to use at, at, at times. Yeah. And for yeah, cycling. so Thursday night, track's open. Safe place, lovely environment for people to, it, to cycle on primarily. But yeah, I ran around there a couple yeah. of weeks ago. It's just nice, really, and it's good. I think, I think um, a lot of a lot of care needs to be taken around people's mental health as well. And it is proven that physical exercise helps with mental health. We, we are all really busy. We've got a lot going on that we've got to deliver. So it's important that people just have that time to yeah. uh, to what to do what they want to do. Would you share a benchmark lap time? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've only I've only set I've only set my first time, but yeah, if it's windy, so for those of you who know the track, if you're on your bike and you go around Windsock and it's windy, that's a killer down to yeah. the bottom hairpin. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not always brilliant. Um, you have an Elise on order. I do. Would yeah, you share the spec for us. Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, yeah, I've gone I've gone for a um, two forty, so final edition two forty, uh, zero blue and uh, with the color, the matching interior and stuff. I've always wanted an Elise. Um, I love the car. It's, uh, I've got one I'm driving at the moment as well, so I've just borrowed one. And, and it's, it's the right time for me. And I think, um, I think it's important as well, don't you, for the boss of the company to be driving <laughs> around in a, Lo in a Lotus product. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know when I'm gonna get it though, is I kind of said to him, look, Satisfy the customers first and I'll wait. I didn't really mean that, but actually, <laughs> <laughs> that's where we are. So it's kind of September, October, November. So when I get it, I get it. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not in a rush, really. We've, from uh, the 6th of July, we're, we're basically flat out with a mirror. So I won't have much time to drive it properly anyway. No. Yeah. And loads or otherwise, what's the best car you've ever driven? And what's, if you could have one car in the dream garage, what would it be? I, I you know, I love... I love British cars. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a British car fanatic, to be honest. Um, I think, I don't know. Well, the best car I've driven is a Via. 
I mean, we talked about it a bit off camera beforehand. I drove it at a mere 1,600 brake horsepower. <laughs> um, and uh, it's amazing, the, just the performance, the delivery that you get from there. I've driven a mirror quite a lot. Um, I don't know how many, if people know this, but we've actually been running the Amira mules for about a year now. So there's these, these interesting looking cars going around. So they're Avoras with, because we've widened the track and we've increased yep. the wheel size. There's like flared wheel arch Avoras that have been running around for about a year. So I've driven both engine varieties in that as well. And it's a fantastic car. It's, uh, it's quite funny. I drove the Amira, done about 10 laps. And I could see them all getting a bit edgy. <laughs> so I pulled in and said, can I just keep driving this until it runs out of fuel? And they're like, no, 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 we need the car back. <laughs> so um, I think dream car, I can't, uh, an Aston Martin or something like that. Or, you know, historic Lotus would be amazing. Something yeah. like that. And Elan or something along those lines. Yeah. 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 With your um, your background in engineering and your role before managing director, um, Lotus Engineering seeing a revival. What are your plans at the moment for engineering? So we want to grow into a sustainable business again. It's it's got the opportunity to be a big chunk of our uh, revenue from um, as well as producing cars and licensing all those things that are coming through as well. Um, we are working, and and this is this is something else that the strategy around what we did with Vision eighty three years ago was we knew we would get to this point now where we have platforms that we could go out and sell. So we've got some very interesting partnerships that are underway. Uh, the Renault Alpine one is out in the public, but there's there's some big ones that are following as well. But we're doing a lot of smaller stuff. We're, we're getting into our own battery testing. Um, we're, we're doing, we're, we've completely redone the ice cells here for testing as well. We've got the Lotus bike that's gonna be in the Olympics. So we've done that work. So there's, it's always interesting programs that are going on, but ultimately we want to grow that side of the business. Um, we've taken on uh, the site in Wellsbourne, so Lotus Advanced Technology Centre, that will be the home of Lotus Engineering. So it gives us a bit of separation from Hethel, confidentiality around programs as well, but it takes us closer to the customer base. So um, that'll be, a, it, it's ready to go now. We've just been waiting for the COVID restrictions to come off to uh, open the doors. Yep. So. Um, on a daily basis, do you have much interaction with Geely? Do they give you direction or are you fairly autonomous? And looking at engineering, are the Geely group of companies engineering clients yet or is that in the future? No, so, uh, yeah, day to day. I, I talked to Mr Fong, who's our CEO. I think I've had three meetings with him this week. So we're preparing for a board meeting in July. So we're going through a lot of stuff like that. They're not, they don't direct us. They, they you set a plan, they agree a plan, you have to deliver the plan. And that, that, that's, that's where the pressure is, you know. There's things always go wrong and you have to adjust it and stuff. But I, I'm open, I'm an open person, so I like to keep him informed of where we are. As a boss, you don't like surprises, I think that's ultimately. Uh, Engineering-wise, for us, as we need to do for, the, for achieving Vision 80, so we've got the, the sports car product plan, we've got the lifestyle product plan. We can't do all that here, we haven't got enough people. So we've, we're working with colleagues in Sweden, um, colleagues in Germany, colleagues in China as well. So we're going to become a global company. And we are a global company now. And th that's going to keep going. But we are also working for the Geely companies. Um, we've, we've just signed off actually on a programme that we've done for them, a, a dynamic ride handling mm -hmm. programme for one of their products. So it, it's a really nice relationship. I mean, somebody somebody described it to me with Geely is a lot of places you have to if you want to get into the shop, you have to pay to get into the shop to then understand if they've got anything you want to buy. Geely, we can go and look at the shop, but then we only pay for the stuff we need. So that for Lotus, that's a fantastic position to be in. Yeah. When um, looking back to 2009, when the Avora was launched, um, it won a lot of Car of the Year awards, a lot of press accolades, but never made the sales targets expected of it. Mm -hmm. How will the Amira be different? What are you working on towards that? Well, it's a world car for a start. So um, we've designed it uh, with selling it across the world in mind. We've designed it, making it much more usable. So it's got the, as I said to you before, it's got the Lotus Dynamics. It's taken a Vora Dynamics and, and improved them, but also it's much more usable. So everyday storage, connectivity, it's got brand new interior, which I've, you've seen and I think you were quite surprised about and I think, I think customers will be surprised about as well. It's also about building the brand um, and it's, it's confidence as well, isn't it? You know, it, if people... If people can see longevity of a company, if they can see it's real, we're sat here on the new production deck, um, brand new facility that we've built. We're sandwiched between the track and the production hall. 
it's happening, it's real. And getting that message out, I think, will drive confidence in it as well. So. With the Amira being the only car in the Lotus lineup now, what do you see as its competition and how are you planning on getting customers out of those competition cars into an Amira? So the competition or the segment that we're going into with Amira is, you know, is clearly the Porsche Cayman, um, the F-Type, uh, vehicles in that range. Um, we, we see this as an alternative to those cars. Um, I think people will be very happy with the pricing when it's announced. I think they'll be happy with the content that's there. So this is truly is a, is a completely different vehicle for Lotus, much more usable. Um, ergonomics is class leading, performance is class leading, technology is where it needs to be for the modern day and things like that. So that's how we, we plan to attract the customers. But it's also, it's not just the car, it's the service, it's the relationship, it's, it's, it's getting to know the company. And we talked a lot about one team and being a family, and that's, that's what we need to do. We just need to grow the family, because then if, if you get, as you well know, and as the people we're talking to know, if you get into a Lotus, they're fantastic cars, and the relationship with the company is something we need to grow as well. And with the Amira being a hard top, as I've just seen, um, are there plans for a soft top convertible Lotus in the future? Yes, in the future. Amira is just going to be a coupe. It's important for us to get a durable, quality product out there as soon as we could, really, to refresh the range. Um, so we have, we've minimised risk in some ways on, on going to a coupe. But yes, there is plans for future products will be convertibles as well as the uh, hard tops. Excellent. Um, as a Lotus owner, um, does the factory have any plans to make the ownership a more social experience? Any driving tours, any track days for owners, that sort of thing? Yeah. Um, We've it's already started on the on the website with my Lotus and things like that, trying to get that interaction. Um, why we've got you here with the forums as well, uh, and I think in the future we we want to make Hethel a destination facility. We're going to put the museum in. We've got the new restaurant that's here. We've got the track and everything like that. So, uh, and we have some plans with partners. What three words and things is that we can do? We can do some rallies and stuff. So yes, we do. Yeah. But right now. Um, I won't apologise, but the focus of the management team is delivering what we said we will do this year to get this car into production, so the revenue start next year, and then, then we're, we're on our way once we've got this car into production. Uh, you said during the Driving Tomorrow webinar that out of 100,000 Lotuses produced, 75,000 of those are still about. Um, our owners do struggle with parts supply sometimes, and with those cars and future cars in mind, do you have any plans to get down these lead times on car, uh, parts which are on back order? Yeah, and it's still an issue, actually. Um, uh, soft tops, for instance, is one at the moment because uh, the factory in India has been hit by COVID. So co we were getting there. We were getting much better with the parts that's in there. But ASO is a big part as well. And we've, we, we're have putting in expanded facilities in Norwich for ASO. We've got a new team in there. So we are working to improve the parts supply. I know it's an issue. Um, and, and it's always a balancing act between do we supply the line, do we supply? But yes, we, yes, we are. It's something we're working on and we will provides parts going forward. And with, with that in mind as well, and the values of the older cars certainly heading north at the moment, mm -hmm. will you consider offering a full restoration service like Porsche, Aston Martin and Ferrari? Yes, that's something I want to do. Um, heritage or a restoration service. But again, as I say, we've got, we've got 10 core strategic things that we're doing this year, so we're concentrating on them. But as, as we grow, this will be looking, this will be what we want to do, and it's part of the Vision 80 plan, yeah. yeah. You mentioned the Heritage Centre. How are plans for that progressing at the moment? It's on hold at the moment. Um, the site's there. It's ready to go. I think we'll start it again in the new year. We just got to a point where we've, we've consolidated facilities from Worcester, um, Vulcan Road, into our new um, site, Lotus Advanced uh, Structures in Norwich. We've got all the work that's going on here. We just had to take a bit of a reality check and just say, let's focus on what we need to do to get this car into production. And then, so next year, that'll restart. But... We've, we've got the stock, we're buying the cars. Um, I think it's going to be a really exciting place to come to, Hethel. With your background at Tesla and clearly looking at alternative fuels to electric, um, are Lotus prepared if something changes or are you focused on EVs at the moment? We're focused on EVs. That's where our strategy is. Uh, during your seven years at Tesla, how was Elon Musk to work for? <laughs> um, well, I can't say, I can't <laughs> say we were on there. Uh, I spent a lot of time with him, actually, because the business was really small then. Um, he'd spent quite a lot of time here because the Roadster was the only product they had. I think he's, you know, he was good training for what we've got today, is if you do your job, you were trusted, and if you delivered, you had no problem. 
it's where you didn't deliver what something you've said. And that, that's, for me as a management style now, I feel that now is I'm, I'm happy to trust people to do what they have to do, but it's when they don't deliver what they promise is the problem start, really. So. Yeah. With GD having an interest in motorsport via Lincoln Co, and your current connections with Extreme via Jensen Button and Alpine, what other plans do Lotus have for motorsport directly? We're going to go back into motorsport. We're going to go back into GT4 next year. Um, there'll be a GT4 Amira. And then from there, ultimately, we would like to, we'd like to grow our motorsport offering. Uh, we're going to get much more involved in the Extreme E stuff as well. Um, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting area for us again. But I, I, I keep saying it, but just right now, we need to concentrate on getting this product into the market. With the new product in mind, our second biggest source of traffic is America. Yep. That's where our, most of our members come from after the UK. Um, America, the market, is suffering a little now. What are your plans to reinvigorate the United States? Well, actually, it's not. America, the market, is not suffering. We've just had the last three months, we've had our best sales that we've had in America. The GT Avora, they love it. Um, we, were, we were a bit concerned that Amira would impact uh, Avora sales. So we weren't going to take Amira to the US, US this year, but we are. So it will be a quail, it'll be a Monterey. So the American fans will be able to see the car this year. Yeah. And surprisingly, China is now one of our top 10 sources of traffic. Is this going to be a sports car market or a lifestyle market for you? Both. Yeah, both. And, and, and that's a big segment. You, you talked about um, where we're looking to take segment away or build volumes. China will be a big area of that. Um, and they will love this car. It's, it's a beautiful product. Matt, thank you very much for your time. And I'm sure I speak on behalf of all Lotus owners and enthusiasts, certainly via TLF, when I wish you the best of luck with your job and with the Amira launch on the 6th of July. Thank you very much. Pleasure to talk to you and thanks to everybody else.